uh, using Illustrator. And so the, our self-portrait is going to have these two parts. And one of the goals with this is to explore the difference between raster graphics, uh, which we see with, uh, on the left with uh, Photoshop, where each pixel color is described. First is vector graphics, where instead of describing uh, individual pixel colors, we describe shapes um, that have points and curves and other geometric uh, properties. Um, so I'm going to go to Illustrator, and I'm just going to get started. Uh, I think I minimized the program down here. Um, so I'm just going to get started with a new comp with a new uh, file here. I don't need source images, as I mentioned. Um, if I want to scroll down, I can kind of look at some different basic uh, types of files that I might do. And one of the things you'll notice is for letter and postcard, the unit is PT versus for uh, common, this is a web format, versus HD video, the unit is PX. PX is pixels, that's what we're generally going to be working with because we are making stuff for the computer. PT stands for points. This is like if you were doing like letterpress or physical printing. Um, they use points as a basic unit, which is like how big your letters are. Um, so I'm going to go to more presets and actually look for something else. Uh, I'm going to go to mobile, maybe, or web. Uh, let's do, I'll do mobile. Um, so you can see these are kind of like set to look like different phone sizes. So maybe if I wanted to make, uh, you know, I don't know, the cover of a, of a phone app or something like that, I would do mobile. So let's do iPhone. I'm going to do something a little bit smaller uh, than the most recent iPhone just because I don't want to like have way too much space to work with. So this is the iPhone 876 and it's 750 pixels by 1334. Uh, there's a few other things here. Width, height, I can change the orientation. can set the number of artboards. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, there's a few settings here for raster effects. This is basically when the image gets converted to pixels, which, which it will eventually do. How many pixels per inch do I want? I'm not working with inches, so I'm just going to ignore this. Um, so all this stuff is, I'm just going to leave all the defaults here and click Create. Um, so that's going to get set up for me. You'll notice that the Illustrator uh, interface is really, really similar to the Photoshop interface. It's obviously made by the same company. They use the same basic stuff. Um, I can kind of move stuff around here. So just like I did with Photoshop, I'm going to move my layers over here because I use the layers a lot. Uh, the properties is really useful as well. Um, I might want to add some stuff here later, but for now I think this is fine. Um, and yeah, this all looks good. Uh, I'm going to save this arrangement, so I'm going to go to Workspace, click New Workspace, say Owens Cool Layer Layout, and so now I can always go back to this if I want to. Okay, some things in Illustrator work very similarly. For example, if I hit the space bar, I get the hand, and I can move my canvas around. So that's very useful. I have layers. Uh, whoops. Go away, go away. How do I get this thing to stop? OK. I have layers, which I can turn on and off. Um, and we'll work more with layers in a second. Uh, but the tool sets are very different, because I'm going to be making shapes and text much more than I'm going to be interacting with photos. Um, I can zoom out by hitting Command plus and Command minus, Command zero to fit, Command one to go to 100%. A lot of those things kind of work the same. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command zero. And I don't really want to draw an image of myself. I think what I'm going to do instead is make like a logo for the class. Maybe it's something I would use for like my YouTube thumbnail or my open lab page for the class, something like that. Um, so to get started with that, I'll probably want some shapes. Let's see. Um, and so I'm going to create a shape, and then I'll just go over a few basic properties of shapes. Um, so this little square guy is the rectangle shape. If I hold down on this with the mouse, it'll show me the other shape options. I'll go over those in a second. 
I'm just going to start with a rectangle. Um, I'm going to make like a, I guess I don't know if I really want a portrait. I think I want more of like a square actually than a portrait. So I think what I'm going to do, if I hit um, Shift O, this will bring up my artboard. And I can actually change some of the properties here. So let's, I want to do something square instead of portrait since I'm doing like a sort of thumbnail logo thing. So I'm going to do, instead of 375, I'm going to do 512 by 512. Whoops. Okay, that's not what I, oh, I did. Okay, I need to change this. Okay, width and height. Okay, so then if I click on my rectangle, I'll go back to the regular view. Okay, so now I have a square. This is probably more close to what I want. Uh, so now I'm going to take a rectangle, and I can just drag. So I click and drag to make a rectangle. One thing that you might want to do when you're making something like a logo is have uh, some guides. So if I go to View, and I go to Guides, um, or actually, let's do grid. So if I say show grid, it's going to show me this like little grid thing. If I want to change how the grid looks, I have to go to preferences and go to guides and grid. And then I can set the grid line. Um, I think 72 is, is, more, is, is too big. I think I want to do 64 pixels. And I'll do four subdivisions, so I don't have quite as many options. Uh, and then actually, I, th I think I made a mistake with this. I want to set this here. Okay. Uh, don't worry about that. You probably won't need to set that. Okay. I can toggle the grid on and off by hitting command uh, 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 quotation mark. And when I have the grid on, my rectangle is going to snap to these units on the grid. So it'll kind of like... Well, actually, I think I have to set that on, too. So if I go to View, uh, Snap to Grid. Snap to Grid means that my tools will snap to these points on the grid. So now you can see, instead of moving smoothly, it's jumping to these different points. And so this might be useful if you want to have something that's like very exact. So I can see exactly you know, how many columns this is or rows. You might not care about that, um, but it makes it easier to kind of design your logo. And then if I hit Command, uh, quotation mark, the grid goes away, and uh, I can just see my rectangle. Uh, the blue stuff is like the transformation stuff for the rectangle. So if I want to not see that, I have to click one of these arrows and click outside of this. Um, I'll go over the arrows in a second. Um, so I'm going to select my rectangle again. And so you can see there's a bunch of different options here. I can scale. Uh, using one of these boxes. If I hover like a little bit close to here, but not directly over, it turns into this like curve. And I can use that to rotate if I want to rotate. Um, I can move these guys in to create rounded parts. So if I want a rounded rectangle, I can do that. Uh, and then if I'm just hovering sort of generally around it, I can just kind of move it. Uh, so that's my basic shape. Um, there's some properties over here that I can change with the shape. So if I have the shape selected, meaning I have to use this first arrow, which is the selection tool, I have to click on the shape. So when the shape is highlighted, that means it's selected. And so then I can go to the properties and I can actually change stuff. So if I want to change the color, I can click on the fill color. And I can choose different colors, or I can go to this color picker. So there's swatches. So I can choose like blue, or I can go over here and use the color picker and find a nice color, maybe a light blue. So the fill is the inside of the shape. You don't have to have a fill. I can turn this off by hitting the red X, and it'll just be see-through. But if I want to go back to blue, there I can go. The stroke is the outline of the shape. So if I click on this stroke and hover around here, it's hard to see because it's very small. It's only one pixel. So I'm going to turn this up, and we'll see that outline gets bigger. Um, so that's what the stroke weight does. And I can choose different stuff here. I can also click on the stroke, and there's some other options here. Um, I can also turn the stroke off if I just want a fill. So if I just want a blue rectangle without anything else, I just turn the stroke off. Um, there's also an opacity setting. 
so I can make it transparent. There's nothing behind it, so we can't see anything. It just looks lighter. But I can make it so you can see through to other objects. OK. Um, let's turn up the stroke just a bit so we can see it. So now let's talk about our two arrows. Now that we have a shape, we can talk about the difference between the two arrows. Um, the arrow that is uh, hollow in the middle is the selection, and it's selects an object, so I can move it around, I can transform, do different stuff. The other arrow that's filled in uh, is the, what is it called? Direct selection. This lets me select parts of my vector. So a shape is basically a collection of points that it fills in color. And when I use the direct selection tool, I can actually select these different points and I can manipulate them. So I can move them around. This looks a little weird because I added these um, uh, rounded corners. So I'm going to turn that off for a second. And now I'll just have one point. So it's a little hard to use the direct selection tool. One thing that happens to me a lot is I'll select the shape and move it somewhere. But then I'll go to the direct selection tool. And I think I'm about to move a point, but I'm still moving the whole thing because all my points are still selected. So I have to click outside, and then I can click a point, and now I can move the point. I can also select two points, so I can go like this to make a little box and select multiple points, and then I can move both of those points at the same time. Or I can select one point and then hold shift and select another point. Okay, so now I'm selecting these two points. Okay. The key commands for the selection tools, V is the main selection tool, um, and A is the direct selection tool, where I can uh, change these different points. OK. So those are our basic shapes. There's a lot of different shapes. Um, I can go here, and for example, I can make a circle like that. And if I hold shift, it'll be a circle. If I don't hold shift, it'll be an ellipse, meaning that it has a different width and height. Uh, so if I wanted to make like a character with some eyes, I'm not going to do this, but just for example, I can make a shape. These are all go into whatever layer is selected. So if I open up this layer, you'll see now my rectangle and my ellipse are still separated, even though they're on the same layer. So we can still organize our shapes this way. Something that's useful that I use a lot, if I'm moving this shape around, if I want another one of these, I can just hit Option on the keyboard. And then if I drag on the shape, it'll make another one. And I can do that with anything. I can make a new square. Uh, I use that a lot when I'm working in, in uh, Illustrator. OK, so maybe I have some eyes. I'm going to turn these off for a second. I can also make a polygon tool, which is a shape whoops, that has uh, a different number of sides. And so I can use this little diamond here to make a triangle or just a square or a hexagon or a, uh, no, that's a hexagon. That's a pentagon, hexagon, something with seven sides. I don't know what that is. Octagon, eight sides. And I can go up to 11, I guess. I thought I could go up further, but that's how far it goes. Uh, so I can make different shapes with that, and then I can also rotate these and do different things. I can put this over here, maybe. Uh, and so now I have this polygon over here. If I want to change the names of these layers, I can just double click and say, uh, this is my uh, pentagon. Um, so I can name the layers if I want to. Uh, and then, of course, once I make a shape, I can take my direct selection tool, and I can uh, manipulate the points of the shape to do different stuff. Um, so there's a lot to play around here. Obviously, I'm just going to show a couple more things, and I'll, I'll let you guys work on your own stuff. Um, I don't know why my pentagon. There we go. OK, there is a pen tool. Uh, this will make let you make kind of like drawings, essentially. Like you can make different points, and you can make whatever type of drawing you want to make. And it's going to do its best to kind of fill in uh, where you want to put it. And then you can still manipulate all these points with the direct selection tool once you're done. 
So I'm just clicking on different parts of the canvas. Um, with the regular selection tool, you can move it around, you can rotate it, you can scale it, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, there's another pen tool that does curves. So I would basically make different points, but then drag them around to kind of make them rounded if I want to do that. So that's kind of fun. You can play around with that. One of the things that's weird about the pen tool is you have to tell it when to stop. Um, so like when I start clicking, it's just going to keep going until I either click the original point or if I don't want to click the original point, I can hit enter or no, not enter. What can I hit? Escape. Yeah, I can hit escape and then it'll end my shape. And so I've got a little shape there. So if you want to make like a little drawing, you can use one of those pen tools. Um, Another tool that's really useful uh, is the text tool or the type tool. Here you can make a box and you can type whatever you want into it. So let's say I was making something for the class, I'd say MMP100. It's very small. So what I would do is I'd select this type and then take a look at my properties section. And it's going to give me some options. I can change the color and stuff, but I'm going to want to make it larger to start. So this little this guy tells me how big it is, and if I hit the up button, or if I go down here and choose something larger, or I can just type in if I want it to be 100, I can do that. And then I can choose different uh, fonts. So there's lots of different fonts on the computer. They have different properties. You'll learn more about fonts in uh, one of your design classes. Um, but I can just choose a font that I think looks good for the class, maybe this guy. Uh, it's not, we can't see it right now because there's not enough space in this box. So let me make this box bigger. There we go. Uh, I can also like align the paragraph and uh, there's a way to vertical align. Where is that? Uh, maybe it's this. Oh, yeah, area type. Okay, so I guess I can align center. I can change the color, um, but I have to make sure to actually select the text first. So I have to hit the text tool or the type tool, which is T. And if I try to change the color, it's not actually going to affect. Oh, I guess it does. I thought you had to have it selected. Maybe that's Photoshop. OK, so I can choose a different color. And I can do a stroke if I want to on the type. Um, that looks kind of weird, so I'm just going to get rid of that. I probably don't need that on my type. Uh, and the type is always going to be just type, but I can actually convert this into shape data. So um, this is probably getting too detailed, but if I go to Object and I go to Expand, it's going to turn this into a shape. And so now it's no longer text. It's like a bunch of uh, shapes, like my uh, shapes that I used before. So I can manipulate them like that. But I can't edit the text anymore. So you don't want to do that until you know what your text is going to be. Um, OK. I'm going to go show you guys one more thing, but then I'm going to let you just play around with stuff. So one last tool that's really fun to use and really useful. Let's say I have these like different weird paths. Let's say I want to like put them together. Oh, I can drag my layers around, by the way. So if I want this path to be above this one, I can just do that. So I can just drag it up and down inside of my layer. Let's say I want to combine these shapes. Uh, let's turn off my text for a second. There's this tool called the Shape Builder tool. And if I select some shapes, so I'm going to select a couple shapes and then take my Shape Builder tool, it'll let me basically take the cutout. So if I click there, that's going to make a new path that, uh, once I pull these apart, now I have these two shapes put together. So that's a really good way to build compound shapes out of other shapes. It takes a little while to get used to because what happens essentially is you don't actually see the result of the thing until you you finish doing it. So I made the shape, but then there's all these new shapes. So if I only want that one, I can just click on these others and hit the delete key to get rid of them. Uh, and then I have my final shape. But when I just use it by itself, like for example, let's actually just delete that. Let's say I have these, whoops, let's say I have two shapes and I want to put them together. 
So I have to first select the two shapes, then I can do Shape Builder, and I can click, but then I can hold Shift to like add all of these shapes together, or I can like drag around like this. And when I do that, it makes this shape. Um, so there's a few different ways to use it. You kind of have to play around with it to get used to how it works. Um, all right, anything else? There's a bunch of other stuff that I want to cover, but I think that's enough to get started. Um, so uh, I'm going to stop the recording here for now. And if you guys have questions, I'll go over them, and then we'll uh, continue with our workshop time.